Hey guys, welcome to episode number 474. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday. And I'm happy to say the outdoor off-grid aquaponics setup is operational. Super excited that I got this solar panel set up. And um, I'm actually really surprised that that little pond pump, that little DC pond pump, was actually big enough and strong enough to run this barrel. Now, as you can see, we've got a really good amount of flow coming out of it. And I did actually pick up a second one. Um, this is almost the same model, except it has a finished plug on the end. And uh, I'm surprised, I'm actually a little shocked at how powerful these DC pumps are. I guess it's because it's DC instead of AC. Uh, you know, the size of the pump is, is definitely a little deceiving because as you can see, it's able to produce quite a bit of flow. But we are in direct sunlight here, the back side of the house, and the solar panel should get really good sunlight for most of the day. Uh, there's really no tree cover, which would obstruct it from getting direct sunlight. And essentially what we're doing is we're using this solar panel, as you've seen, to power a battery. And this is the dry box. The dry box is completely operational. I just popped the cover off so we could take a look. And uh, it's powering the battery. And then the battery is what's powering this pump. So essentially what's happening is there's water down bottom. It's pumping up until we get to the top of the bell siphon, as you've seen. And uh, we'll take a look at it here when it reaches the top. We'll watch it operate. And uh, it's just a uh, you know, flood and drain. So this top part floods and then uh, the bell siphon kicks in and then it drains back down into the bottom. Now, one issue that I noticed last year when I had set this up originally was there wasn't a whole lot of water left in the bottom when the top was completely filled with water. And I knew that if I was gonna put fish in a system like this, I didn't wanna stress them out unnecessarily by having low water level. And so what I did to help combat that was I just added a second barrel. And uh, the second barrel is not completely operational yet. I'll be getting around to that this week, but I did connect the two down low with a uniseal and a union. So water is able to pass between the two. It's a two inch uh, PVC line. So um, plenty large enough to even allow fish to swim between the two uh, if they wanted to. But what it's doing is it's doubling the size of my water reservoir down on the bottom. And I think what I'm gonna do, because this pump is actually so strong, is to split it so that I have half of the water going into this barrel, and then I'll run a line and allow the other half of the water to go into this barrel. And I'll try to stagger the two so that this one is basically completely full while this one is completely empty or some somewhere around that. Um, just so they're not both full or both empty at the same time. Uh, and if I do that, I think I should have plenty of water down below so that the fish don't get stressed out or anything like that. Obviously, I don't have any media in these beds yet. It's really important to uh, test out your bell siphons and get them really dialed in before you add media in because it's a pain in the neck to get it all out afterwards. But I do have hydrogen media here. I got quite a bit of it and uh, that's what I'm gonna be putting in this first barrel. And then I might run a test and do something like a pea gravel or something like that in the second barrel, just so I can compare the two and uh, see which one I like the best. Um, obviously there's gonna be a price difference too. All right, so you can hear we've got our siphon that just started. You can see the water coming in down there. And uh, actually this pump is so strong that it it fights with the siphon a little bit. It's pumping almost as much as the siphon is able to suck down to the bottom. So uh, it actually takes quite a while for this thing to completely drain. Um, so that's one other reason why I wanna split this flow between this barrel and this barrel. 
So the siphon's running. We'll let that run for a few minutes while we go and take a look at this dry box a little bit closer. Now, one feature that I really love about this is the on-off switch. So I can just push that. And as you can see, our pump stops. And we just flick it back on. And the pump's back on. So without even opening this box, I can turn that pump on and off if I need to do any maintenance on it or uh, you know, like a water change or anything like that. Um, it's super easy to get to and uh, really, really like using that. Um, as we enter inside this box, let's take a look at all of these wires one more time. So we've got the positive and the negative running from the solar panel and those are going into our solar controller and the, it's going into the positive and the neg negative on the solar controller here. That's allowing all of the energy that's being created by the solar panel to go into this module and this is what regulates our battery and uh, our pump. So the next two wires go to the battery itself. So while it's sunny out, the solar panel is sending energy in and it's charging the battery. However, if the battery is already full, it's not gonna allow that to overcharge the battery, which is really important. And then, when we have a load going, like we've got our pump on right now, um, that's pulling energy from the battery, and um, you know, if, uh, if it's sunny out, then you're creating you know, as much power as you're using, or oftentimes you're creating a lot more power than you're using, and when it's you know dark out, uh, we still want this pump to run. So it's still pulling power, but it's pulling it from the battery itself. So I've designed this with a basically a marine battery, deep cycle marine battery, and I've sized it in such a way that I can get away with pumping water for 24 hours um, on a single charge of this battery. So if it's completely cloudy out for a day, my pump will continue to run for an entire day. So those are all of the wires and those are all the different places that they go to. Um, one important addition that I made since my last video is this fuse here. So what I did was I just added a fuse in between the pump and the battery so that uh, if for whatever reason there's a short or uh, you know water gets into um, the, the line from uh, the pump itself or if there's any troubles at all that fuse will pop and it will protect the battery and the solar panel uh, I don't really see it being a big issue, but it's a nice safety feature to add to it so As you can see the water is starting to get down here towards the end uh, I'm going to remove this so we can take a closer look. This is the media shroud This is what keeps all of our hydrogen media away from the bell siphon so it can operate properly and this is the piece that you really need to work with and dial in um, I built this a few weeks back and I shot a video on that and since then I did cut down the tube the clear tube a little bit so that I gave this cup a little room to go up and down and I think the addition of doing that has really allowed me to, uh, to dial this in and make sure it operates correctly. Essentially what you're looking to do is use this snorkel tube to break the siphon on the system so that you get a clean break and that your flood and drain can operate um, as intended. So anyways, that's the setup. Um, I'm super happy with how it's operating. Right now, I'm sort of in the process of giving this like a 24 hour test to see if, uh, you know, on a sunny day, everything operates correctly. On a cloudy day, everything still operates correctly. I'm gonna split this flow and get both barrels operational. And at that point, once the bell siphons are both dialed in, um, I will be adding the media, adding some goldfish, and adding some plant seeds to this system. So that's what the project is gonna be here for the next week or two to make sure that this is all operating exactly how I want it to. And uh, then hopefully, finally, 
we'll start to get some plants in this system. I'm super happy about that. Uh, I think what I'll probably do is start with something easy like tomatoes and lettuce in these systems. I know there are some plants that do a lot better than others um, in sort of an aquaponics setup. So uh, I'll probably start with those. I'll, I'll probably run tomatoes in one and lettuce in the other. I'll see how it goes and uh, I'll try, you know, harder vegetables after that. Uh, all right, so we're getting down here towards the end and uh, what we're gonna watch for is that cup. It sucks the air, it breaks the siphon, and at the same time, it floats. And what that allows it to do is cleanly break instead of just continuing to slowly siphon and slowly gurgle water. And once the water starts filling back up, we'll start the cycle all over again. Put the shroud back on. I'll let this continue to do its thing. And if it's operating correctly after uh, 24, 48 hours of sunny days and uh, cloudy days, then uh, I'll be ready to take the next step and add my plants and my fish. Anyways, guys, I hope that was a quick walkthrough of this system. Uh, this is obviously very modular. I can add a second and third battery if I need to. I can add additional pumps if I need to. I can add additional solar panels if I need to. It's just a matter of how large of a scale uh, you need to go and uh, exactly what you're trying to power and how much power it actually takes. So anyways, that's the system. Super excited that everything is plugged in and working. And uh, I'm really happy that I don't have to plug this into the house anymore. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.